Hello and welcome back to Total War Rome 2 and the ancient Seleucid Empire that has taken Alexander's legacy beyond what even he himself was able to accomplish. I am the heir of Carthage, of course, and I'm glad to have you back and appreciate those of you who continue to follow this long-running series. I think we are doing well. We've got a lot more to go, and I'm curious, I always forget what our actual victory objectives are. We need to fully control Mesopotamia, um, which is very nearly done. It's just Cherax, so as soon as Cherax comes back under our control, we'll have that victory condition. Maybe that, that might be all we need. We have not enough naval units, no, so we need technically enough naval units. Now, some of you might be saying, air, air, don't give up before you defeat the barbarians. Yeah, I don't know exactly when I'll stop making episodes of this. Um, I, I don't want to just map wipe as that will be very, very lame. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to just sit here and have two episodes of me training pointless naval units just to satisfy the um, the uh, victory conditions. So in any case, let's continue. We've got some wars still in front of us. We've got a lot going on. And as always, as I get started, if you all want to continue to support this, please make sure you hit that like button if you find that you enjoyed this whenever the video is over. And then, of course, if you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. A lot of you aren't subscribed. You can subscribe and hit that bell, and you'll you'll be the first to know whenever we get a new video for this campaign up. Also, I figured we could have a fun discussion today on in terms of, um, you know, future historical Total Wars, potentially a Total War Rum 3, like a million years in the future, if Creative Assembly ever gets to it. Um, and I'm going to, again, theme this one after news that's based on Warhammer 3. Well, today we got a little bit of a news about quality of life improvements um, that are coming to Total War Warhammer 3. Um, some of those are mostly relevant to fantasy games, and then some of them could be relevant to future Total War games. Like, for instance, the ability to select units and then right-click and drag them, and they immediately go into a formation. Being able to select idle units, uh, being able to put more unit abilities on hotkeys... Um, so, as for me, one of the things when I play Total War Rome 2, and honestly, this game is this game is still fairly well modernized, all things considered. Like, when I play this one after having played so many of the new games, it's really not that bad, you know? Like, um, the, the, the controls in this game are really pretty good, um, I think, for the most part. Uh, like, it's not as dated and archaic feeling as some of the others for certain. However, there are definitely sometimes certain quality of life improvements missing, like the ability to hold shift and then right click and paint a movement order instead of having to use shift and then clicking waypoints and then the unit going extremely slow through those waypoints. Um, so there are some of those things that could certainly find their way into um, future Total War historical games. And beyond that, there may be some quality of life improvements that you all have in mind um, that maybe more specific to a historical game than they are to a fantasy game. So one of the things I wanted to ask you all is, what quality of life improvements do you want to see in a future, I don't know, Total War Rome 3 or just historical Total War in general? What type of things um, do you think CA needs to do to make the UI better, um, to make controls better, um, just to improve the overall experience that you have when playing the game? So hit me. this is very interesting. The Iceni want a trade agreement here? I'll take it. Are they really going to not be at war with me for a while? Because if that's the case, it'd be nice. I got plenty of other stuff to clean up at the moment. But yeah, let me know what you're thinking. And speaking of letting me know what you're thinking, let's get to some comments from the last episode, the first of which came from Smoke and Free. Um, he said, enjoyed that. Thank you, Air. With regard to marrying off your folks in the politics section, if you arrange more than one marriage per turn, the gravitas cost goes up each time. If you were to wait until next turn, it would only cost around 20 Gravitas. Hopes that helps. It does help. Thank you very much. Um, so I do not want this fight. Um, yeah, I just, I do not want this fight. I'm going to retreat. I don't want to risk getting a bunch of my army killed at sea. So there we go. Retreated from that. Avoid a potential disaster. The secessionist fleet is still at sea. I do not have my own fleet in the vicinity. Uh, to help. Let's get one more comment here. This one from Ardek, um, who is quoting, uh, or at least making a fun, uh, or no, 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 he's actually quoting one of my generals. Um, he says, uh, Dion, I can hardly say this one, Dionasoros says, I never liked the Nori, and then he made up his own lame joke here. Uh, he nods approvingly saying, Nori. Get it? Nori, Nori. Yeah, see, I, I thought that was perfect. So Ardek, you are a champion. Uh, Jonathan Pop says, Eric, 
Uh, you can get at least level three horses for all your armies if you upgrade one of the settlements in Macedonia. All right. Thanks for the tip. I will go take a look at it. All right. Our population surrendered slightly before I could free them. That is somewhat frustrating, but also really not much of a problem because now I'm still right here next door. So I hope you Odrysians enjoyed that. Their other army took off running. Is this the Dan Danube? This large river? I don't, I'm not great with my European geography, or especially Eastern European geography. Um, they are like kennel dogs, and they are going to get sieged out like kennel dogs. If you can siege a kennel dog. I don't know exactly how that works. Let's continue the siege. <laughs> Um, so I'm just gonna hold them here and then see if that other army will turn around and come back and fight me. That would be ideal. Uh, I've got this other fleet that was rowing to make its presence felt over here against the Odrysians. I still only just have the one army to face the Odrysians at the moment, which is a little less than ideal. However, I think this army is gonna be able to move south. I'm going to go ahead and do so. Um, it won't be able to replenish. How do I want to do this? I'm going to go ahead and move this army south. I'm going to keep it in my own territory so it'll be able to replenish while moving. Uh, the defenders of Olympus are still in a good position. I, I just, I got a feeling Massilia is about to betray us. And some part of me wants to preemptively get them because they have that large transport fleet right there that I can take out. And then I can immediately move into Genua and then move this army west to face them. But, I mean, we still have Arverni and other things, but at the same time, Massilia is a threat. They're going to be an annoying threat at that um, until we're able to take them out. And I always think that it's going to be easy to take someone out. This game usually ends up proving me wrong. So I don't know exactly what will happen in that regard. Let's go ahead and move this army all the way up. Looks like Cyrene has got a plague going on right now, so it's a perfect time for me to come in and try and capture it, make sure you get all my men sick. Let's get some info on Genua. I just I have such a good opportunity at the moment to take out that large Massilian fleet with my own navy. And I am very interested in doing so. Let's see, I can bring this army back over. Because, like, in one turn, I could kill uh, their army at Genua before it can train. I could take out this fleet here with my own fleet. So, like, for instance, I can come in here, um, grab these two mercenary ships to help just kind of help bolster up my fleet a little more. I could even put upgrades on here just because I got the money. And I could take this fleet and. These guys are in a forced row here. They might be able to get away, though. I don't know if they'll run or not. Let's see what the declare war situation looks like here. It's Carth Carthage is my defensive ally, but it wouldn't pull them into this one because I'm not being attacked. I'm attacking them. They really don't have any... I don't have any agreements with them. So... Not technically going to hurt my reputation with this. They did stand here to take this. And as much as I would like to fight this large fleet engagement, these are usually kind of a crapshoot. Um, so I'm thinking... I'm going to just see what the auto-resolve does. I did a quick save here. I think the auto-resolve will treat us much nicer than if I had to control this myself. It did. And, I'm, and again, some of you may think that's lame, but this is just me trying to make sure I don't get myself into a really bad situation here. Now, we should be able to fully destroy this fleet of transports. So that takes care of a large Massilian force that was in our borders. I'm going to kill the captives. And then let's take this fleet... Back to Neapolis. And now let's move against the Massilians at Genua. With the might of Heracles here. This is going to be a very tanky army. Lots of elite swordsmen and a few hoplites to back it up. So, yeah, we've got um, a decent garrison here. So we'll go ahead and fight this one. I'm going to take a look at some more comments that 
came in from you all on the last episode. Uh, Mikey Pickett says, after the Seleuca campaign, it would be awesome to see you try a Roman campaign. I actually really feel like doing a Roman campaign myself. The question is, do I do it in this game? Which would be fun. Or do I do it in Attila and try and like rebuild? You know how we kind of rebuilt Alexander's legacy here? Maybe we go and rebuild the entire Roman legacy in Total War Attila or something, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of waffling. You all can give me your thoughts on that one. But I do really feel the need to play some Roman campaign. Um, Boziath says, thinking of playing as Numidia when the Desert Tribes DLC goes on sale again. How would you rate them as a faction? I'm hoping they have Jugurtha as a playable general. I don't know if he's like based off the real one. But as a faction, Numidia is pretty fun. They've obviously got access to a lot of javelins and a whole lot of javelin cavalry, um, Numidian noble cavalry. Their infantry selection is definitely going to be weak compared to Rome. But if you can get yourself up to like the desert legionaries or Numidian legionnaires, uh, those units, basically you can get some pretty solid mid-tier swords that will hold up a line while you're skirmishers. And that is where Numidia really excels is with skirmishers. Um, your skirmishers can basically do the work for you along with your skirmish cavalry. And then you should be able to get access to elephants, I believe, as well. Um, so Numidia should have not a whole lot of problem, really, uh, you know, for a player who's able to control their troops fairly well. So I, I think that you would have a pretty good time playing Numidia. And, and I like the idea of letting the DLC go on sale. Don't get me wrong. This game is really good. It's a very fun game, but it's very old. And a lot of this stuff should probably be on sale for people to go buy it. They still charge full price um, for a lot of things in Rome 2. And that's honestly a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> so, I don't know. Just just my thoughts on the price there. But, you know, you can make your own decisions. And I do think that uh, Numidia is fun. You get some other factions with the, uh, the Desert uh, DLC as well. So, it should be a good time for you, like I said. Especially if you wait and catch it on sale. I think it never hurts to wait and catch something on sale. Um, all of us in life should typically be more patient than we usually are. So I think it would be a, a good idea for you. Okay, Celtic Slingers over here. Let's bring up our Heavy Cav. I'm going to push these reinforcements up closer as well. Alright, the Massilians have some transport ships coming in. I don't want these Peltists and Slingers to get at my flanks. So I'm going to go attack them, and I'm going to run up here with my Royal Peltist and attack these Celtic tribesmen. My archers are in range, and I'm going to go ahead and pull my swordsmen up closer to, just because I can. And move my heavy archers up a little bit as well. Let's take these two silver shield swords. And they are actually silver shield swords now. They're not just overstating their title. Is that the Peltist unit? No, okay, good. We caught the Peltist unit. It's a light hoplite unit nearby, though, that I don't really love being there, so we're going to have to fall back. Let's not waste our ammunition here. Let's just get in and crush that Celtic tribesman. I feel like this Peltist unit should be dying a lot faster than it is, like a whole lot faster. Fortunately for me, light hoplites don't have javelins, so I don't have to worry too much about the approach of that hoplite unit. But this is kind of ridiculous, like how long this Peltist unit is holding out against two super heavy cavalry units. Okay, so we've cleaned up this front. Let's actually halt and get braced here. Let's fall back from the light hoplites. We get after this Celtic slinger over here. That Peltist unit didn't die. We didn't even kill half of it. It got charged by two super heavy cavalry, and we only killed less than half. Seems a little bit unreasonable there, if I do say so myself. I'm gonna take this uh, cavalry. Go ahead and attack the Peltus from this direction, and I'm gonna move my cavalry in this way. The slingers will start getting me in the back, but I'll take my cavalry to go cut them off. One of our units has used all its ammunition. And then I've got a good situation over here, too. Our archers are just absolutely working, these guys. Take our Ozzets in there. Push these guys. I'm going to pull a kind of a bait and switch here. 
I'm gonna come in here and attack these infantry units, and then let's support Light Peltist. I don't want the Light Peltist on fire at will just at this moment, though. I'm gonna catch those Light uh, Hoplites with my Swordsmen now, and now I've caught these Celtic Slingers. There are some more units coming in as reinforcements. Get them. Hoping that Levy Freeman will take off. That's another Levy Freeman. We gotta fall back. They're about to jab one my face. We don't want to take a volley of javelins up the Morgan Levy Freeman. I can now get a nice rear charge here and then start pushing these units forward. Alright, we've sat around long enough over here. Kind of just toying with my food. Oh yeah, that was a nice rear charge there. Oh, Ozitz, you stay here, help crush light hoplites. These royal peltists need to push forward. Head this way. I'll set Knight's point this way. Let's get into melee. Alright. What the heck happened over here? My Oz at Knight stood still and got trashed by Thurio Spears, and my Hoplites made a pathfinding mistake. Excellent. That is exactly what I wanted, CA. How did you know? Like, just how are you that good? <laughs> or on the flip side of that, how am I that bad? Um, let's go ahead and run the Royal Peltist in here. Thought I told my general to attack. Apparently not. Let's go get these light hop lights. Okay, I've still got my Peltist here for support. I'm actually gonna do a quick volley here with these Light Peltists, and then I'll probably charge in here. There we go. All right, sorry, I'm having to bounce around the battlefield pretty quickly. You got a lot going on. Cease the Javelin fire so we don't do a lot of friendly fire. Hey, easy, easy. Armored elephants in. Clean this up. There's a Massilian Hoplite unit here. Massilian Hoplites are decently tanky. I think I'm going to delete them with my javelins. We forced those skirmishers over this way. They're going to be gone. Turn off fire at will on all my sword units here. That way we don't accidentally get my own elephants. How are my shield bearers doing so poorly against Massilian Hoplites? That just doesn't make sense. There's nothing about that that makes sense. I even have their flanks outdone here, so I'm gonna delete these Massilian Hoplites with my Light Peltists. That's a little bit ridiculous there that the shield bearers are underperforming that hard. Alright, now we're just waiting on the naval reinforcements. Just took a volley of javelins to the face, so that was well done. Stupid Levy Freeman. Alright, that Massilian Hoplite is gonna be done. We got a lot of kills with that Light Peltist, and they have a lot of ammunition. So you can see they've thrown all those volleys and they still got plenty more to go. So that was a really disappointing performance from my shield bearers. There are only 30 kills. Um, that is highly unimpressive. Alright, so we've just got some Levy Freeman rolling up on us over here. I'm gonna soften them up with some uh, archer fire and then 
let uh, my general come finish him off. Yeah, they wasted a javelin volley there. They might have three, though. They're really determined to charge my heavy archers, though, so I'm gonna let them do it. I'm just gonna counter charge my heavy archers. I got enough armor to hold off here. Especially against Levy Freeman. Are these units, Celtic skirmishers. My cataphracts are going to not do a very good job of chasing these Celtic skirmishers. So I'm going to reposition my archers. They've got just a little bit of ammunition left. I'm going to sling some arrows up and over here. My shield, uh, or my silver sealed swordsmen have, you know, pretty good shielding. So I'm going to let them tank that for a minute while I try and wither out some of these units with the rest of my archer fire. And then I'll charge here. Using precision shot should help my accuracy. We've got really low morale on those units. Now they're just doing more damage. Let's go ahead and charge. Should be able to get these guys to route here. It's the hope at least. Yep, one of them routed. Of course they got a hoplite unit back there so I can't make that charge still. So let's go charge. Hoplite. Okay, we can now charge both units through here. Get in here and finish this battle off. Come on, cataphracts, go! Boy, cataphracts are slow. I like them. But they be slow. Alright, this uh, hoplite unit actually probably got way more the benefit of the doubt than they should braced up against that elephant charge but it won't matter now because they're surrounded by silver shield swordsmen and their Celtic skirmisher unit's going to be run down they're now coming ashore with their final units here too get some units in position here royal peltist alright we crushed the hoplite unit And that's going to leave the rest of their troops reeling in terms of leadership. Hoplites. So, some hoplites and skirmisher units left. That's good news. They've lost multiple generals, so Massilia will have taken some pretty egregious losses here in this battle. Yeah, I want you all to come through here. That That's a thing I'm asking you to do. Boy, the pathfinding is bad sometimes in this game. There we go. Attack that last hoplite unit. There they go. So that is the end of Massilia's presence in Genua. And a pretty big victory for our troops. You can see why those light peltists are handy there. Look at 192 kills. Yeah, and they still had probably 30 to 40% of their ammunition left. So, they are good units, if you can keep them alive, get them in behind something. Again, very good at warding off heavy cavalry, elephants, anything of the sort, like uh, chewing up heavy infantry. There's a lot of really excellent uses for them. Uh, it's Hellenic here, so I'm just going to go ahead and occupy Genua. And are you all impressed? I remembered to look. You know, you should be impressed. I'm going to convert... Uh, well, we have a Satrap Stable coming up. I am going to leave this building here, though. I'm going to leave it there because uh, it helps with the garrison. I don't need that building, though. So I'll swap it over to something more useful for me. So we are now in control of Cisalpina. And we're in a pretty strong position. I've still got um, Hannibal's Revenge here. We can't move through that forest, which means they can't move through there either. So Hannibal's Revenge is not in a great spot because I can't really get at my next enemies very easily without crossing through enemy territory. But at the same time, you know, it leaves them in a pretty good guard situation. 
waiting on them to counter-strike us here. Let's go take a look at Cherax. And then, of course, we got, yeah, the Griffin's Grace just took this settlement. Having to rid ourselves of some of the... Can we not get rid of this building? Guess not. We're trying to. The Great Dam, I guess it's just there, whether we like it or not. I'm gonna move further back north with this army. Then Sherax is under siege. Did their armies leave? They did. What a bunch of weirdos. So Cherax is now going to fall back under my control. I'm going to quick save this in case the auto resolve screws me over. I think we'll be okay though. Their garrison really shouldn't have caused much damage to me and it didn't. Desert Nomadic, so we're going to raise it. At your command. And I'm going to rebuild Cherax. Try and get a garrison in here this time, too. All right, so we'll have control of Cherax, which means Mesopotamia is back in my control now. Gerha is likely to be attacked here. We've got five pike units, Persian hoplites, four hellmen. Like, we've got a pretty decent army, so if they bring the bronze warriors over here to attack me... They're not going to find a lot of room to work with, uh, which means that they are just got this remaining settlement out here that we need to go take care of, and this army should be able to get on the march and go do so. I thought Media was going to chase him down, but I guess Media decided not to. Very helpful of them. I'm going to bring this army ashore, and now these guys are going to get outmaneuvered. They came out to attack me, and now Peritonea, or yeah, however you say that. Um, we're going to go take it off of them. And again, this looks like an auto-resolver. Just quick save in case we get screwed. And we can start to wipe out the secessionists. We'll need their army to come back ashore, of course. Should be Hellenic. Plus, this was our settlement, so we don't... Well, I mean, I guess we could slaughter our own people just because they rebelled against us. Grove of nymphs. Um... That army has to wait till the next turn to move. We are purposely sieging the Odrysians to see what they do next. I think that is most of our troops that needed to be moved. Do have the Heralds of Thanos holding position there. And we've got our Dignitary, which can continue into Bowie Islands to keep gathering information. We've got a couple of skill points to take care of. One is with our fleet here. Melee attack skill. Shots per minute. Let's do this melee attack skill. And then we've got... Wow, cunning armor for all units. Armor is probably pretty good. Public order research rate. Minus, er, that's plus five corruption. If there's a minus corruption, we typically want that character. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. That might be good. And then, let's see, shots per minute. Here we go, and then let's start giving. Uh, this could be good, getting extra campaign movement range as an admiral. Um, let's take care of Pericles Pride here. They've got an army tradition, it looks like. Oh, it's a general skill. We're doing zeal with him. The Might of Heracles. And we were doing Zeal Tree here. Alright. So. That said, we have a lot of money. Let's flip over here and take a look. Man, we are making some serious cash out of Syria and Nabatea. Africa has turned into a pretty great... Um, Revenue producer as well. Ethiopia, not bad down here. Not bad. I'm trying to remember if there are buildings in this tree that boost industry. Assistance. Well, no. Commerce. Let's do some work at Rome. We build a great library at Rome. Commerce well generated by slaves, grain market. 
Um, what do I want to do there? I don't know exactly what I want to do with this building. Oh, the quarter. Uh, let's do an amp uh, amphitheater, so it'll be like our version of the Colosseum now that we've taken over. So I'm going to do some work in Italia there, so we'll spend up a ton of money on improving Italia. And now we should be ready to end our turn. Let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to get some more comments from you all. It didn't pick up right where I left off there. Okay, yeah. Here's the next comment. It says from Said. Uh, it says, Hannibal the Great set the foundations for a world empire. Yes, he did. He made a big contribution here. Um, no. occupation with this war. May see him unleash further torment. Okay, yeah, if you're not going to be a satrapy, then you can forget it. Like, you're you're not walking free. Um, so that's right, Saidi did. Um, NDST Mouse says, I don't understand why archers seem to want to move so much in this game, even on guard mode. Ah, exactly. It's a mess. It's something that CA should have patched quite a long time ago, but did not. Um, so I agree, it's a mess. Um... It needs addressed, but it's not going to happen at this point because the game is beyond its support window, unfortunately. Um, Jesse Williams says, this series made me a fan. Cheers. Well, thanks, Jesse. I'm glad that it made you a fan. I'm always appreciative of all the awesome viewers that I have out there, and I love making this content for you all. Daniel B says, thanks for another great episode. Well, thank you, Daniel. Appreciate you watching and taking the time to participate in the comments. It is much appreciated, sir. All right, let's get our troops... You know what, I'm going to actually do a heavy sword side and just a heavy spear side. I think that'll be fine. Our shield bearers should be able to hold their own without much of an issue. Especially with the proper cavalry support. So just to be safe, I'll put the archers kind of on the shield bearer side. And let's go... I have to be pretty careful. Antiochus is a little bit old. So I'm going to use the War Elephant unit out here rather than Antioch's not going to hold him in reserve. All right, there we go. Got everything set. Let's push forward and go teach the Odrysians that they should not have started this war. That they have bitten off way more than they can chew. And we will make them sorry for it. They do have a lot of these. Uh, well, they have a mercenary Thracian cavalry, but they have a lot of these units here, these Thracian Peltus. I really like Thracian Peltus. They're a cool-looking unit. They do a lot of javelin damage, too. They have a very elite javelin. Um, I think it's the 41 damage variant, um, so they, they do a lot of damage. No joke. Our hidden units have been discovered. I'm gonna just start to Ready fold this orders. flank in over here. And then I'll just drop my pikes into a phalanx. My archers are already doing their work. Go into guard mode, and I'm going to start targeting Thracian Peltist as the Falx troops are of much less concern. I would love to just charge and interrupt those Falx units, but I'm going to get shredded by Thracian Peltist fire if I do. I don't know if I dare counter charge these Falx units, but I don't want to just sit here and take it either. Start working these troops to the flank, so I've done some good damage to the Thracian Peltist there. My shield bearers are going to get a little bit thrashed on the charge here. The Thracian Royal Cav back there. Our hidden units have been discovered. Yeah, my shield bearers took some damage on the charge. That's, I think, to be expected. These units, alright, we just got a good hit on that Thracian Cavalry. Oz at Knight's going to get caught in a pretty big fight here. I'm going to continue to mop up these Falx Warriors with my War Elephants, and then take care of the Thracian Peltus with my Archers. No, don't chase them. Leave them alone. Use my Royal Peltus to drop some Javelins on their world. 
Okay, archers, take it easy, because we're about to start causing a lot of friendly fire. Bring my general over here. Rear charge that cavalry. Alright, now we're in good shape. I love how the Azat Knights, like, scream at me when I'm talking to them. Azat! It's like, leave me alone, air. We know. Okay, so this Thracian Royal Cavalry, it's their last unit of the vicinity, it was actually performing pretty well there because the Thracian Peltists were helping to cause a lot of damage, and you may remember that they're a decent hybrid unit. They cause quite a bit of damage in a hybrid role. Um, so, good victory for us. Our shield bearers took some damage on the charge because those Falx units hit hard, but after they hit, their damage drops off for the most part as they rely heavily on that charge bonus to help them achieve victory. But they can kind of overperform versus really expensive units like shield bearers because of that charge bonus. Uh, Ghost of Shushimi says, here's a campaign idea for you, Air in Rome 2, a hard campaign difficulty campaign with normal battle difficulty as a Swaby, using a lot of female warrior units they added with the DLC and a lot of flaming or even whistling arrows using the fear mechanics to great effect. That would be pretty funny, like a Swaby terror campaign. Uh, that would that would be a pretty good time indeed. Um, I'm going to release the captives. We'll take the money off that. We'll probably take control of the settlement. I can't imagine they would have attacked me unless they were about to surrender. That secessionist army is now headed east. And the Helveti now want a peace treaty as well, and they're willing to pay for it. Let's take that, at least for the time being. And let's see, one more comment here. Um, Palm Breeze says, more videos, enjoyable as always. Well, thank you, sir. I will keep them coming. I'm glad to hear that you enjoy it. Um, and Zochi says, whether or not they're lame, I love dad jokes. Well, I'm glad because you're going to get a lot of it. That is probably Antiochus, unfortunately. He is also quite old. Him and Hannibal were around from the very beginning. Yep. Oh, no, no, that's the Heralds of Triton. So that was our Admiral who had been around since the very beginning. So let's find another one of our Seleucid family members. We should have plenty at this point. And we're going to... See, it doesn't show me the type, the settlement. Well, actually, I can see it right here. So let's go ahead and raise it because it has too much of their influence. Ready for orders. All right. Natural causes. He's an old man that died at sea. And let's get to building here. That should do. So the Heralds of Thanos um, are taking attrition, I think, because there's a plague here. That's your command. Yep, disease. So that is unfortunate. Uh, if there's large Odrissian armies nearby, that could even become problematic. Um, I'm going to work my way forward to Epidomnos. I can see the Odrissians mustering there. This army right here is not going to want to come ashore. They have a pretty good army here, so that'll be interesting. I'm going to go ahead and take Ammonium and see if that lures that fleet back to Peritonean because it won't be defended. And then if it comes back, we can hopefully kill them there. So again, let's quick save here. Auto resolve. Get rid of these secessionists. And we'll occupy. So we've retaken that. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about changing any of the buildings to be all right. All right, they have a pretty large army here. It's called Ares Terror. I'm not very terrified. This is a very elite army that I've brought up here, so I'm more than happy to take these guys on. I'm going to attack this army outside the settlement. Hopefully it pulls all of their other troops in as reinforcements. It's just Levy Pikes. That's probably the garrison. Yep, it is. And then here's Ares Terror. They have Thorax Pikes, Thorax Swords. Persian Hoplites, some Indian War Elephants, and Royal Peltists. So this ought to be a fun fight right here. 
Let's get this one going. I'll get a few more of your comments while we're loading in here. Uh, Nick Bear says, pour the camels, but it's nice. It's great to see you being attacked from all sides as your empire expands. It's what would happen exactly. People would eventually see the writing on the wall and try and join together against you. Um, so yeah, it, it's actually made for a very fun late game, I have to admit, in this campaign. Uh, Funny Waffle says, you were saying about destroying political parties. Unfortunately, it won't work. New ones always rise and you have to go over and over again. Yep, which is what I'm going to keep doing. The new ones will keep rising and I will keep killing them as I actually kind of find that more entertaining and I do the um, push button to pay money to avoid political consequence system that they added to the game. It's just not very interesting. I think the family tree is cool that they added. Um, I think that adds value, right? Being able to do the marriages and stuff. I, I definitely feel like that adds value um, to the game and is fun. But the political system is pretty crappy. Like, I'll be told, like, it's it's pretty bad. Like, it's just, just not good. <laughs> um, does it ruin the game? Nope. Nope. It's just not good, though. So, uh, anyway, my two cents on that, for what it's worth. Which is probably only two cents, possibly less. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Ozit Knights and Elephants on this flank, but I want the Elephants to the inside. And then Shock Cavalry and Melee Cavalry teamed up over here. We are ready to go. Let's push forward up this hill. It's going to take some of our stamina. The AI is likely going to be waiting for all its reinforcements, and that makes sense. They got an Agima Cavalry General. Very cool looking cavalry, albeit probably not the best choice, but I mean, this this cavalry does look absolutely sick with that armor and like those bracers up and down their arms. Like, it looks really nice. A very cool looking unit skin. Um, but Agima Cavalry is not bad on the charge. It's just that they're not as good as Cataphracts. And uh, if I am going to pick a shot cavalry that's not cataphracts, I typically go with companion cavalry just because, you know, it's more Alexander themed. But again, that's just me. You all don't have to do things the way I do it. Are they going to suicide me? Oh, gosh, they're coming up from... Oh, crap. They're coming up from my flank. No, they're not going to suicide me. They're trying to get in line with their own troops. Shoot. I just made a big movement, boo-boo, and hopefully I don't get punished for it. All right, I'm going to try and get repositioned. I think I might be able to pull it off. Yeah, I just made a huge boo-boo there. My troops are going to probably be tired, too. I'm being chased by a Median Cavalry, Citizen Cavalry. Shoot. These guys are going to be out of position here. I may have to defend them. Let's be prepared to do so. Don't really want to get a fight started down here like this then it'll keep my troops out of position. But yeah, I'm left with no choice. Um, let's do a quick charge here. Shoot, 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 shoot. This is bad. I've got a royal peltus caught out here. This is not what I want right now. Um, archers, I need some support fire down here. Let's go ahead and run these units back. Don't really want to stay here and fight this Midian Cavalry, but if I fall back, my unit's going to get slaughtered. Hopefully they'll cycle. Yeah, it looks like they're cycling, so let's go ahead and retreat our Royal Peltus while we have Archer Cover Fire. It's a Pike unit approaching me, so I'm going to put some fire on them with my Archers. And murder that Pike unit. Yeah, I didn't really want that fight to take place either. Fall back. Okay, I'm getting reorganized, and we should be okay if I can watch my flanks. Alright, let's put the line here. So we're being outflanked, so that's good. The AI is actually doing a good job of putting me on my toes right now. That was not the best start on my behalf. Okay, so I'm getting repositioned here to fend off the skirmish cavalry that's on my flank. There's thorax pikes coming at me here. Quite a few of them, in fact. And we've got another skirmish cavalry up on me here. I'm going to have to deal with it. All right, that skirmish cavalry is going to get wrecked. I've got a thorax pike unit making its way behind me. Our general is under attack. 
Oh my gosh, there's so much going on. The AI is actually leading a fairly interesting attack here. Like, I'm kind of actually impressed. <laughs> like, I know it sounds weird. I don't really know what to think. Like, I'm, I'm kind of impressed here. Like, the AI is actually leading a somewhat competent, fairly interesting strike against me here. And I'm having a little bit of a hard time pushing it back. Um, their pikemen are attacking me in the front, and this is not going to be ideal for me. Um, I've got... Levy pikes. I'm going to kind of collapse. Actually, you know what? No, I want this unit back here to help wield off some of their pikes. I have elephants inbound. I'm going to have to turn my archers and put some fire on those elephants. I'm getting shredded by uh, skirmish troops, those eastern slingers up here. So this is this is a mess of a fight, and this is not how I would have wanted it to get started. So this is actually a really excellent fight for the AI and a really bad fight for me so far because my positioning mistake, you know, where I screwed up and didn't get my units in position on time, it's about to cost me. And it's about to cost me big time. I've got to turn and get some Peltus fire into these elephants. Shoot, I'm about to get elephant charged too without getting a Peltus shot off. Alright, I'm going to temporarily use my Cataphracts to fend off that elephant charge. I'm going to have to get some Javelins into that fight. I've got that Levy Pike caught, or at least, I mean, I've got... Come on, dang it, my units, my archers are repositioning all squirrely and stupid. I'm outflanked over here. I've got problems on that flank. Uh, with this, this may turn into a bit of a debacle. We'll see. I'm gonna have to keep it in slow motion for the time being so that I can do my best to try and fight this without just losing. These mercenary African elephants are coming up hard and fast. I need my Ozits to swing around. And we've got to go put some pressure. There's another Persian hoplite up there. Dad gum, man. Just the number of units is actually really starting to look problematic for me. Though I did get some routing going on up here in the front. So that is good the news. This Silver Shield Swordsman taking a ton of damage from that Eastern Javelin men. I really need some help against these elephants. Um, we've got to put them out of commission quickly. I've got my... Javelin's working on one, and then I need my archers to turn their attention to that eastern javelin man that's messing me up up front while we're double piked over here, so that's also a bad situation. Some of their infantry, though, is not in an ideal situation, so I'm hoping we can take advantage of that. Their elephants are now under heavy fire and should start to drop off quickly. They are. I already see numbers dropping. The Indian war elephant, though, will be stronger. But my cataphracts are going to take some damage because they're in this melee I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to pull them out, though, in anticipation. There's more elephants headed my way. Let's now get these troops over here to reinforce against the Thorax Swords. Our Royal Peltists are getting completely overwhelmed. Ooh, it's a good thing we got high-quality troops here. We're gonna need a... Let's see if we can get to the top of this hill with our... We are outflanked right here. I really want to rear charge that Levy Pikeman as well. I am putting, like, so much what skirmish you, fire into their elephants. We are still, still struggling to make much of a difference there. This is not going to be a good fight for us. Hold in there, Royal Peltist. Hold in there. Need my general to maybe inspire them. I've got to hold the line with them for a little longer and put a rear charge in here. Eastern Slinger. All right, the elephants are gone. I can now turn my attention to some of the javelin men who are making life miserable and then hit that thorax pike. I think we can push through this spot with our cataphracts and get to all these archers here as well. There's a good opportunity for me to get some eastern slingers dead. All right, we might be able to turn this a little. Uh, we'll see. Still a very ugly fight at the moment. But the uh, quality of my infantry is showing because as these melee blobs kind of just do just that, like kind of devolve into blobs. You guys shouldn't be moving. You still got ammunition to throw. Back up and throw it. All right, my cataphracts just punched a hole in the middle, but there's an Agima cavalry still about. 
Let's be careful to not get too overcommitted here. Transfer some of our infantry over to this fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of successful infantry now. So now the AI is just falling victim to the high quality of some of my units, and it's going to take its toll on them. So I'm feeling pretty good <clears throat> that we're turning it around, though. I have to give the AI credit. I mean, they did a really darn decent job here. Like, I made a mistake, sure, but, I mean, the way that they approached me so aggressively um, was very different than what I've seen recently, and it was honestly highly effective. It was highly effective. So that was very well played by the AI, whether it was purposeful or not. I mean, it was just an impressive showing. My general is still doing okay here. I'm going to continue to inspire those Royal Peltists. I'm hoping they can last without getting absolutely destroyed. Because the battle is very much <clears throat> turning in our favor at this point. This infantry blob is still a notable crapshoot for me. I'm going to send more infantry that way. Yeah, more infantry this way. I'm going to start firing down here into these Royal Peltists with my archers. See if we can start to clean up this fight. Because this one down here is a concern for me. My Azat Knights are pretty worn out. There's some Indian war elephants in there. <clears throat> men flee the field of battle. I need to get some rear charges, but there's pikes pointed all kinds of awkward directions. This is where the extra ammunition on my light peltist is going to pay dividends because they are still firing. Ooh, that Agima cavalry is going to hurt. Come over here and chase those archers off. Yeah, yeah, that's some good fight. That's what we want right there. My archers are going to start really mopping up that fight. Another infantry free. I actually, I, I want to bring this infantry around and behind this fight, see if we can end it. This fight is now a little better because I've gotten some reinforcements into it, though the initial shield bearer that was taking that fight, I do believe, got utterly destroyed. Those pikemen are just relentless. I've killed a hundred of them, and they're still just, just coming on in, undeterred. Push into those archers. Come on, let's clear this fight out. Yeah, my archers are definitely starting to turn that fight in our favor. I'm going to let that Persian hoplite go and then just rear charge these hillmen here. Get into there. Don't let them get away with it, men. Alright, so... Let's get them. I got hit by a little bit of a... Archers, get away from those pikes. Come on. This fight might start to break up now. With the morale issues that's going to be caused. Still got just a few more units. I need to kill some Royal Peltist here to kind of finish that once and for all. Chasing the Agima Cavalry. Let's finish that off. I just went into melee with my Light Peltist here. My Archers are cleaning up Royal Peltists. The enemy morale is starting to waver on the whole. This is good news. This is good news, folks. We are going to manage to pull this one back from kind of a catastrophic start. As soon as this Royal Peltist starts to give way, it's going to be over. Got to be careful now, though. That Royal Peltist is moving back over here towards my own elephants. Running away almost. Hoplite units. Got a lot of like small units that just need cleaned up. I was hoping that the army morale would collapse as a whole, but it hasn't. Like it's still giving them a much better chance than they deserve. That is highly frustrating right now. Because it's basically just going to cause me a bunch of unnecessary casualties and potentially cost me entire units. My archers are walking around the battlefield doing idiotic things as well. So, gotta love that. You click an attack order and they just act like complete idiots. Stupid 
stupid archers over here regrouped. I'm going to have to hit that hillman unit and then recharge the archers. And then we're going to be threatened by levy pikes. Regroup. So I'm, I'm trying to just bowl through these units. Kind of bowl them out of the battle. That's that royal peltus unit. It's now caught by elephants. Once we collapse that unit, that'll hopefully do a lot to end this battle. Go ahead and stampede because my general's probably extremely tired anyway. This fight over here just does not want to end. Let's get into these Eastern Spears. That pike unit's lasting a lot longer than I want it to. There you go, it's gone. This Thorax Pike has been a thorn in my side this entire battle. And these pike units up here have been a real pain in the butt too. Let's ignore the Persian Hoplites. Kill the Agima Cav. Let's run away with my cataphracts. Hopefully I can keep this unit alive. It's gonna be very close. Oh my gosh, just be over already. They don't have an army left. This is just getting downright frustrating at this point. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. Yeah, this is getting extremely frustrating because their armies, like the power bar just won't sour against them. And it's really getting frustrating. They, they can't win. Like they don't have the wherewithal to come back and win. That's a pike unit. Watch it, dodge it, dodge it. All right, now go get those archers. Yeah, they, they don't have what it's gonna take to win this. But the uh, the uh, power bar is propping them up, essentially. Killman unit needs to go down. Get rid of those archers. Mob unit there. Let's tear them up a little bit with the royal peltus. Should be able to shatter that hill unit. All right, my archers finally tore up some of these levy pikes that were fighting up here. They've still got an archer unit up here. This is or a slinger unit. It's ended up being closer than I thought it would be. Um, I thought we were going to turn it and get rid of it, and I honestly think we kind of should have. The army morale was definitely not favoring these guys, but it just keeps like just keeps them in the fight here relentlessly. Fortunately for me, my uh, my Indian armored elephants have done. Some massive work here, 365 kills. So it has done a lot to keep my hopes alive. We have one more Levy Pike unit over here, and I think finally the game's gonna give us the benefit of the doubt for an army losses. And personally, I thought that should have been there sooner. Look at the corpses on the battlefield from this one, folks. That was an epic battle. So as much as I hate how much losses we took there, you know what? It was interesting. It was interesting. That was 5,500 against our 2,500. So we were outnumbered well over 2 to 1 there. Initial movement mistakes on my part ended up costing me. However, to the credit of the AI, them getting around my flanks caused me some significant challenges. So I'm going to release the captives take the cash there forgive me but I cannot and then I'm gonna have to this is a dicey situation we're in here I have to siege the settlement because I'm within its zone of uh, control Wow that was definitely an epic brawl um If I had to resolve this, I'm going to have to re-recruit a whole bunch of my units. Um, however, we're probably going to have to do that anyway, and most of these units didn't really have a lot of chevrons. Let's see just how bad it is. I quick saved it. It's going to be pretty bad, I think, in terms of what it does to me. It's a good thing we had this light peltus. They clutched out against the elephants and all their javelins, and let's see. It's not near as bad as it could have been. It's bad, but it could have been worse. At least we get their settlement, and we can start replenishing, and we have access to some recruitment if need be. Um, 
can we recruit at the moment? Not a lot of good stuff. But I am going to go ahead and do some recruiting. Just to fill in some of the, the gaps that we have here. And then we'll go get the proper units to replace them later. So there we go. Just to fill in the gaps. Um, now we'll see what the secessionists do. Well, hey, that was a pretty epic end to this episode, I think. That was a big battle. So we, we, we took territory against Massilia. Uh, in fact, I can go and lay siege to Massilia right now. Um, let's make sure they don't have a garrison force. They do not. So Massilia is open. And then this opens the door to Gaul for my troops as well. So I'd say it was a good episode. We made good progress. Not only did we defend our territory, but we expanded it. And that's despite all the wars that are going on. And there are a lot of wars. Some siege engines created here. And let's maintain the siege. And I've got safe flank here. I'm going to move into Genua. So yeah, we're in good shape here. Um, other than, you know, needing a little bit of a hand still, I think, down here. Uh, against the Odrysians, but that is all going to be um, taken care of soon. I think the only last thing I need to do is march this army north through the desert as quick as I can to go take away the last settlement from the Saba, who shouldn't have much left in terms of being in our way. Let's see. Tron. Good stuff, good stuff. Get this place built up. A little bit of the cash we have there. So hope you all enjoyed the episode. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will be back soon with more action in Total War Rome 2. Can't wait to see you then.